Today we're looking at electric motors, and specifically four main types, brushed, brushless, induction, and reluctance. We'll go over their uses and benefits, and animations will show how they operate and how they are controlled. First off, all electric motors operate off of Lorenz's law. That is, that moving electrons feel a force through a magnetic field. The force enacted on a wire is equal to the current times the length of the wire times the field strength, and the force is perpendicular to both the current direction and the magnetic field. Simply put, there are two types of motors, DC and AC. DC brush motors simply require direct current. DC brushless motors, also called permanent magnet motors, require current to be directed to different coils, so they require switching. DC brushless motors more closely resemble AC motors, since the current in the wire is actually alternating. Finally, we have AC motors. Both induction and switch reluctance motors are AC, meaning they require current that alternates from positive to negative with respect to time. Now on to the DC brush motor. These motors are advantageous because they are cheap and simple. They require no switching, Simply connect the terminals of the motor to a positive and negative voltage source and the motor will spin. This model contains a stator, or stationary casing, made up of magnets. In this case, there is only one pole pair, meaning one north pole, the red round piece, and one south pole, the blue round piece. The contacts are the yellow and black tabs. The rotor is compromised of wires, and in this model a single wire is used. The wires touch the contact with brushes, which generate a current in the wire. Because the contacts stay fixed, the current always flows the same direction in the brushed motor. The biggest issue with DC motors is the wear of the brushes over time. Because brushes are constantly rubbing on the contacts, they wear and must be replaced. DC brushless motors are more complex. The use of permanent magnets increases the cost as well as the need for switching of current. Advantages of the motor are a high starting torque, meaning high torque when the motor is at low speeds. The lack of brushes also means that this motor lasts longer than the brushed DC motor. The motor shown has six coils. The coils on opposite sides are connected to each other. Therefore, there are three pairs of coils for this motor. As you can see, a magnet is used as a rotor instead of a stator. Current is applied to each coil pair, which creates a magnetic field. The color change of the coils represents the field, red meaning north and blue meaning south. Only two coil pairs are turned on at once. As pairs are turned on, they attract the opposite pole on the rotor, causing it to move. Transistors are used to switch current on and off in the coil pairs. This motor setup is called three-phase because three unique signals are required, one for each coil pair. Compared to the previous motor, this motor is much smoother because the three pole pairs smoothly switch on and off, creating a more even torque. As you can see, only two wires glow green at the same time, showing that only two coil pairs are on at the same time. This is true for both 120 and 180 degree switching, although the switching here is 120 degrees. For this motor, the 120 degree motor, only two transistors are fully on at once. Once a new transistor switches on, or turns green, another transistor has to turn off. This is how the motor is able to create torque on the rotor for the entire revolution. Next is the AC induction motor. Magnets are replaced with a cage of metal. Steel bars act as magnets around a changing magnetic field. This effect is known as Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that metal in a changing magnetic field reacts with an imposing magnetic field. In the case of the induction motor, the stator generates a magnetic field through the alternating of coils, which then creates a magnetic field in the cage or rotor. This field generated in the cage allows it to act like a magnet, just like a brushless DC motor. Because the AC induction motor doesn't use permanent magnets, it is cheaper to make and as a result is widely used in industry. Similar to a brushless DC motor, transistors switch the current smoothly on and off to create alternating current in the form of a sine wave. However, there is a significant difference between brushless DC motors 
and AC induction motors called slip. Slip occurs when the rotor spins at a slower frequency than the stator. AC motors are known as asynchronous because of this. Because of slip, AC motors are harder to control in terms of speed than brushless DC motors. The last motor type is the switched reluctance motor. You can think of a switched reluctance motor as a cross between an AC induction and permanent magnet motor. They also use wire coils for the stator and magnetize a section of metal, which sometimes contains permanent magnets for the rotor. The switch reluctance motor resembles an AC induction motor, but instead uses a more solid piece of metal, which sometimes has embedded permanent magnets. The coils of the stator create a field which induces a magnetic field in the metal rotor, along with any permanent magnets. The field created in the rotor is then attracted and repelled by the coils of the stator, similar to an AC induction motor. These motors are relatively new and are an evolving technology. To summarize, here's a table of the motors we saw today and their benefits and drawbacks. As you can see, DC brushed is the go-to choice for low cost solutions, while the other three motor types are used for higher performance applications. Thanks for watching the video. Leave a comment if you have questions or feedback. Thanks.